so for capturing the network packets, um, we can use a bunch of different tools, but we're going to use TCP dump for our demo. Out of the three tools that we have today, the TCP dump, Wireshark, and Network Miner, TCP dump is the best one for capturing the packets because of its low overhead and it's very easy to use. You don't need a graphical interface or anything like that. So to start with, the to get help with TCP dump, just type in TCP dump dash H and what you should see is a usage screen and then some options that are going to be displayed below that. And one of the first options is going to be a TCP dump dash D. The dash D just lists the interfaces that TCP dump is capable of listening on. There's a couple of different possibilities here. One is, is you might be using a distribution like Kali Linux and you do a TCP dump dash D and you're going to get a list of all the interfaces. If you run TCP dump dash D and you don't get back any interfaces except for maybe localhost or perhaps you don't really get back any at all. Restart TCP dump with root privileges. As chances are what's probably happening is you're probably running as a regular user which is good but you got to give TCP dump root privileges in order to be able to capture packets. Now to actually capture the packets, there's a few options that are helpful. They're not all necessary all the time, but these are some common options that you'll probably find useful. So the first one is dash I will let you pick which card to listen on. By default, it's going to listen on all the network interfaces at the same time, which will definitely capture traffic, but what it could end up doing is making the PCAP have a lot of extra packets in it that you don't want. So you want to kind of try to narrow to capture scope down as much as you can. The dash NN is a great one to use when you're capturing traffic because it prevents TCP dump from resolving the names of the devices. In other words, let's say that you had an IP address, the dash NN will prevent TCP dump from trying to resolve that IP into its domain name doing a reverse resolution lookup. Now technically that's what the first end does. The second end keeps it from showing the port names by their friendly names like HTTP instead of their numerical name 80. And we just want to typically show the actual port number generally speaking. V is for verbose and W is to write the packets out to a file which can be super handy. Otherwise, they're just going to scroll across the screen in front of you. And you won't be able to open them back up later in a tool like Wireshark if you don't save them out to a file. Now, some of the other options that you might use would be things like the count of the packets to capture if you only want to get 10 of them or whatever. Um, Q for quiet to so don't print anything out to the console. Just write them out to the file. Dash R can be used to read a PCAP back in that you already captured and show it on the screen, which is very handy. And then the, the X and the double X will show on the screen the data of the packets. And you basically, having two of those capital X's kind of doubles it up, if you will, and it actually shows the link as a um, layer as well, the layer two, if you do the two X's. The one X, it shows the starting basically at the network layer and working its way down. Right. And TCP dump and Wireshark both use the Berkeley packet filter <coughs> filtering syntax. So for example, in the slide here, we see a, a few different filters one of them is, is we're filtering on the host 162. And we're saying that that can be the source host or the destination host. So we want to capture packets in both directions according to this example. We also use the conjunction AND to put in another filter that checks to see if the protocol in the packet at layer 4 is TCP. That would prevent us from capturing UDP packets or other layer 4 packets. And so 
all together, we can see an example of, of how to run it. Now, when you want to stop TCB dump, you can just hit Control C, at least in Kali anyway, and that'll stop the packet capture. Now, if you'd use the dash C option, it's going to capture C number of packets and then it's going to stop itself, but this is assuming that you didn't, you just wanted to capture indefinitely. And then you can read the capture back in using the dash R option that we talked about earlier and display your captured packets back on the screen. In this example here, we see that we had captured a three-way handshake. There's a send packet from port 2356 to port 23 with the S. And then there's a SYNAC back from the destination. And I want to point out that S is for the SYN flag and the dot is the acknowledgement. It's not A in this particular program. Now in Wireshark, you'll see that it is an A, but here it's a dot. So that's one difference to keep track of. And then finally, we see that there's an R for reset. You may have expected an, a dot sin, sin, ac, ac. The reset indicates what we probably captured as a scan, a sin scan. The scanner's in a sin, it got back the sin act that it wanted, and then it sent a reset to tear down the potential connection that never will be because it's in a hurry and it's trying to move on to the next port to scan. When you get done capturing the packets, in our example, we wrote out to the file packet capture.pcap. You can read those into Wireshark by typing Wireshark and then the name of the file, or if you used a path like slash temp slash packets, use the whole path and open up Wireshark to read the packets in. So if you do an ls after you get done capturing and you save to the local directory, you'll be able to see a list of the files in that directory and you should be able to see the file that you used and then you'll type that file name in as seen on the screen. So it'll be Wireshark PCAP file and then the ampersand opens up Wireshark in the background. 